Okay. Hello, my name is Timo Hönig. My name is Volker Mack. We are both working for the mobile devices team at SUSE Linux in Nuremberg. And today we want to present our power management infrastructure we are using, which has been developed over the last few years after APM was obsoleted and API was introduced. We, we got a lot of systems not working out of the box using the new kernel capabilities, and we are, we are required to build an architecture to get most as, as most as possible systems running out of the box with the power management. Um, I think we are giving a short overview about what we are going to talk about. Um, a little bit cut on the left hand side, but I think you, will, you can read it anyway. Um, First of all, I will give a short rough overview about Linux power management in general, which will be involving the kernel and the user space. And then I will talk about the PowerSafe architectures, picture and what applications we use to make use of the PowerSafe or power management trusted subsystem. And this will be followed by a short introduction to the new thing it's called runtime device power management. It will be introducing what you are currently be able to do with putting devices into some other sleep state at runtime and thus you are able to save power as well. Yeah, and afterwards we will have a live demonstration and we'll demonstrate how much power is actually consumed and we'll um, make use of the power management features. At the end of our demonstration, we hopefully will have shown that power management is very efficient on this user. And the last thing we are going to present is a short what's next section where we are talking about uh, various things which are coming up in regards to power management of the unit. Let's start. Now, um, Linux power management starts at the kernel for sure. It provides all the subsystems and interfaces we are using with our project architecture to make use of it. The most important, uh, one of the most important features is CPU frequency scaling, that you are able to switch the CPU frequency while uh, on runtime, at runtime. And nowadays, if you've got a dual core machine, for example, you are also able to switch cores on and off while running the system without turning it off. The next subsystem would be um, ACPI. It provides information about battery status of components of the system, as well as it gives um, interfaces for triggering any act uh, some actions to the subsystem implemented at, uh, by the machine. And we have another subsystem I call it device power management because it's lying in the SysFS and you are able to trigger the uh, power state of the specific device by using SysFS. This layer is encompassed by a second layer. We are having the power set beam at top and hall as well, which are directly talking to the kernel interfaces, and they are on the other hand talking to the clients. We are having a third layer. Now let's see how they are communicating with each other. We have two uh, main IPC inter-process communications. Um, the first thing would be system calls between the power set demon and hall. They are using both systems calls, system calls to access the kernel interfaces like CPU frag, ACPI, and the device power management. On the other hand, we have the clients who want to communicate with the humans, and this is basically only done in DDoS nowadays. Um, we have the clients communicating with both with the PowerZip demon as well as Hall, and we have additionally PowerZip speaking to Hall. We have to be moving some functionality from our PowerZip demon which has implemented stuff like battery calculations to Hall to have power range. Now, that's it for the rough overview. We now have some information about the power architecture. Okay, at first um, we have a pa the power safe daemon. It's a root daemon caring about things that need root privileges, like um, caring about multiple batteries and performing the um, corresponding actions, for example, if the battery runs low. 
um, suspending the system, um, switching CPU frequency, and of course doing runtime device power management. But this is currently still under development. Um, we both support um, APM and ACPI in the same manner. Um, a second big and important part of the daemon are its scripts. Um, why do we um, use scripts? Um, for example, for unloading modules or restarting services. And why did we put this functionality into um, scripts? They are easy to customize. Um, you do not even need a compiler. You can simply um, give a user a new part of a script or you can say him you can change line 20 and, and so it's very easy to provide new functionality. We also handle um, hotkeys in those scripts and that makes it possible that users can define own actions on uh, vendor specific key presses and starting it an application or something like this. On top of the Pauzif daemon, we have a set of libraries. At first, there's a general Pauzif library um, summarizing battery information, calculating CPU load, or reading out throttling information. Then we have two further small libraries um, providing convenience functions um, for communication with the whole daemon or for communication over the debus. Demon. These libraries are used by our clients to uh, present uh, the power safe features on the desktop. And for example, they interact with the daemon, triggering suspend states, setting CPU quality, setting different power safe schemes. The other main part of the clients are its own implementations like auto-suspending the system after a specific time. Um, the client has to care about whether the user is idle on the desktop and then um, the client triggers the suspend over the PowerSafe libraries to, um, to the daemon. And the client also implements other features like um, locking the screen when the lid is closed or showing messages from the daemon to the user. And we have a K power save for the KDE desktop, a WM power save for Window Maker or GRAM power save, and we also have a command line application that makes it possible to fully control the daemon. And that can be helpful on servers where you do even not have a desktop. Now I want to give a rough overview how our scheme architecture works. I picked out our main two schemes um, that are in our default configuration, namely scheme power save when running in battery or scheme performance when the AC adapter is plugged in. I also put um, some example features around those schemes and now um, due to because you can configure the daemon as you like, you can put those features into the schemes. Put them inside um, um, like you want, so you can compose your own set of schemes. It's also possi possible to create completely new schemes, it's re really easy. Um, this can be very, very interesting for the user, and he can create his own, cu own custom schemes um, that fits his needs. And you might expect that um, the house of demon of this architecture is only a solution for SUSE, but that's definitely not true. We already got a lot of feedback from other distributions, and here you see the distributions and we know of that the house of demon works and the whole architecture works. And there are also packages available from those distributions already. Okay, let's hand over to Timo. Yes, thank you.
Um, next thing we are going to talk about is runtime device power management. Um, as I look, what we are currently having is like uh, switching the global system state to suspend to disk or suspend to RAM or standby something. Um, and we are also able to switch the CPU frequency, it's also quite easy and adjust. On, on most systems you are also able to adjust the brightness of the display. But what do we actually get? For the case of switching the global system state, we are saving time as we are able to restore system as we left it when we suspended the system. Um, but when you look at uh, CPU frequency and LCD brightness, you are only saving power on the extent of something else. Like you are losing performance when switching to a low frequency and you are losing the readability of the screen when you are switching down the brightness. So uh, next thing which is coming is runtime device power management. Here you are able to um, switch off devices which you are currently not needing. Uh, you, are, you are currently not using and thus you are not uh, having any loss when you are doing so. Uh, imagine you are on the train or somewhere else where you've got no AC adapter next to you so, uh, and you are not using the USB or sound subsystem at all, then you are able to switch off those devices and even if they are currently not used, you will see in our graph next on the live demo, uh, they are consuming power because they are powered on. And with the runtime device power management, you're actually able to suspend the whole device and then you are saving power. Um, little details about it, um, the ACPI specification gives us four sleep states for the device power management. It's D0 to D3, while D0 is the fully powered state, the normal regular state, which is mandatory. And the D3 state is the off state where the device context is lost and you need to reinitialize everything after you power it on. Just um, the D1 and D2 states are mandat uh, not mandatory as the others, they are optional and they are mostly uh, they are not implemented. Question over there? Sorry, um, it's actually your next bit would be echoing the numbers in DCSFS as well. Uh, that's wrong. D0 to 3 don't represent D states, they used to represent D states, but now they represent Yeah, but they are now states. using the D state on the PCI. On no, the they're on 0 to 2 into 6. Yeah, and then you kind of, but you are using a node kernel with uh, 10.0. Right, so it's and, not yeah. generically yeah. true. It really depends on your time session. Yeah. The next thing is an example how to switch the power state. Um, if you're correct, I think so. Um, on the on recent calls, you only got a 0, 1, and 2, not the 3 state, right? And uh, t um, the two would correspond to a D3. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so on an old system, you would use the, the second line. First of all, you have to identify the device you want to power down. And afterwards, you are using an echo to the SwissFS path to execute the switch of the power device, uh, to uh, switch the power state of the device. Um, on recent calls, it would be echo dash N2 to get to the D3 state, which is mentioned above. Um, as always, we don't want users to go to a uh, terminal to hack these things to activate uh, the power management, the runtime device power management, and thus we have enhanced our power set architecture to do this in the PowerSafe daemon, and this is going to, it's already implemented and this is going to be con uh, configurable by using a client of the PowerSafe daemon. It's also important to mention that this interface is likely to change. There's currently development going on, then so because don't be sure that this will be the way you power it down the device in the future. So, what we have actually done um, to test um, runtime device power management to test the consumption. Um, we have a test setup. You can you have one talk, target system that gets message. Method you can see this in front um, from your point of view in the right. Um, the laptop we remove the battery of the laptop um, to get real um, accurate values to not uh, measure the charging of the battery. We have an ampere meter connected to this to this laptop. <coughs> to um, record and measure these values and we have another system running that uh, runs a software recording the values and displaying the values. In this case it's 
QTPMN. Um, now I put out an example of a module and of a device, the IPW2100 module. Um, you see a graph and um, how our test results look like. Um, at this point, the device is fully powered. Oh, I have to mention that um, <coughs> on the y-axis you see the amperes. Um, the volts are constant. We measuring with 20 volts. Uh, the AC adapter provides 20 volts, and so we are measuring the amperes. On the x-axis is the time in seconds. So in the beginning, we are about um, 0 0.820 <coughs> amperes. Um, at this point, we power down the device. You can see a tension peak, a peak, um, the line increases. Um, that's the price we have to pay for powering down the device. And um, further on, the line drops, and you can see that um, a lot of power can be saved by only um, suspending one device. Uh, the IPW2100 module is a very good example um, how much power um, is consumed without the device even used. And these are about, and you can read it, it's um, an example only. Um, the line drops uh, to about 0 0.77, um, um, about um, 0 0.1 amperes. Um, finally, the device is uh, powered on again, and um, it returns to its um, initial state above, <coughs> and um, the peak um, in the end is just the test ended at this point. So now we have a live demonstration and uh, using the power management functionality. <coughs> Any questions so far? Why are you preparing the setup? I've got one question while you're yeah. sitting on. Um, it was not obvious from your presentation so far, or was I probably missed a little bit of picking, but anyway, that how you detect the idle devices. What is the, the It's way probably it? being done by the user on interaction, so you are saying, okay, I don't want to use sound at the moment, but in the far end of the implementation, it would be nice to see whether the device is being used currently, and if not, should be powered on. But that's not implemented yet. Okay, so it's kind of in the session level in a way that... Um, yes. Okay. At the moment, you have to say, okay, switch down the USB subsystem, for example, and okay. then the device are going essentially with the free state. Okay, and now you have are fixing that that you actually switch off the device. We are not switching off the device, no. Uh, we, are, we are sending it to the sleep state in free, depending yeah. on the driver or the hardware it's going to be off or not. Yeah. Okay. okay um, first of all, we are running at full speed. We have a system uh, running with uh, 1.6 GHz. We will see it quite soon when the system is up. We have, uh, what you cannot see is that the brightness of the display is at the maximum, so we are currently using the most power uh, as possible. And we also have deactivated the device, runtime with device power management, so we should have the machine as it would be powered on the desktop when you're running on AC, for example. to show the interaction between the client and the human side. And in this information dialog, we are having the information of the system. 
I'm not sure where we can read the stuff, it says that we are running with the performance scheme, meaning the high CPU frequency, uh, the, uh, which enters the current CPU frequency, it's at the maximum, it's at 160 hertz. We have, uh, at least that we have chosen that, uh, we have brightness level being at 100, and runtime power management is being switched off. And <coughs> currently our system, if it will not start the measurement, uh, yeah. We're missing the y-axis on the left-hand side, so you will have to look at the values and you will soon see some graph, hopefully. It is not. Start. Yeah, start. Now we just keep the graph. That's the value being consumed, that's the 1.05 ampers. Do you mind taking it on the board? Right. Oh. Now, um, the first thing what we are going to do is we are switching down the CPU frequency down to 600 megahertz and we will see how much power this will save. Now you can see we are running at 600 megahertz. Yeah. Power consumption of the whole machine. You can uh, have a look at the setup afterwards. It's quite easy. And now we're seeing that we are dropping down to one ampere, which is already a gain of zero dot four amperes. Simply by switching down the CPU frequency. About one dot one. One dot one. Okay. Now um, the next thing you're not able to see because of the display thing. Um, I will lower the brightness of the display. And you won't see it on the screen, but trust me, the screen on my side gets darker and darker. And when you're looking at the graph, it's falling down, it's dropping. And even though I've only uh, gone to 50% of the brightness, you will see that you are almost gaining as much as with the switch of the CPU frequency, which might not be obvious if you are thinking about what your gain is. And if we are switching the brightness further down to 0%, it's still a little bit on, but much. It goes down even further. We drop to about 0 0.8. And as the last step of those three steps we are performing, we will switch on the runtime device power management. At the moment, we have a switch hard coded for the test setup, which will deactivate the USB sub subsystem, will deactivate the sound subsystem, as well as wireless card and the LAN adapter as well. And this is integrated at the moment by switching the profile. Yeah. Advanced power set. Just integrated it on the test. And now let's see, we have got the peak. And it's falling a little, should be a little bit more. Another peak for another subsystem that is power down. Uh, the scale is about to up, but now we're dropping down. That's what we have expected to scale. We're sending another 0.1 and a half not oh, it's really half an ampere. We had better results in our tests. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, depending on the machine, if the device drivers are smart enough to detect that the device isn't used, it already passed down the device to some uh, consu uh, less consuming state. So we have been testing several machines, and it's very dependent on hardware whether they are gaining anything or nothing, uh, or much. So, okay, so that's yeah. how far we got. 7, 5 MG in the end. Yeah. So we have saved um, about 6.5 ampere. 0.6. Yeah, 0.6. 0.6. Almost 50 percent. Okay, what we are actually um, using at the beginning with full throttle, we had about, um, as I already mentioned, um, 20 volts are consumed. 
So we have P equals U and multiplied with I and uh, so we have in the beginning we okay. have 20 volts multiplied with 1.4 and here okay. this makes 28 watts so in the end we had 20 volts multiplied with 1.0.75 uh, amperes, which should make 15. What in the end? And you can see we nearly saved the half of the actual power consumption we had in the beginning, which I think it's really great what you can achieve with. Um, Powering down devices and all those power management functionality. The thing why we choose to have a setup like this one is that um, the APA, uh, ACPI system already provides information how much power is consumed or the battery information is something, but this is not accurate enough, so we were forced to have something like this for getting real results for several machines we were, we were investigating. Okay, that's it with a live demonstration. So we have a short introduction of two new things coming up in, uh, in power management. First thing would be this part. First part is user space software suspend. I just want to give a very rough overview about uh, what it's all about. I do not want to go into detail. It's a very new technology. It's already in newer MM kernels and hopefully will go to mainline soon. Um, until now, software suspend was done uh, completely inside the kernel, the writing of the memory image and so on. And now, with the user space software suspend, you only have, the kernel only provides a kernel interface, they have snapshots currently, and the kernel provides several I.O. controls for, these, uh, for this kernel interface, like snapshot freeze to freeze processes or snapshot available swap to um, query the kernel about the available swap, swap space and there are several others. Um, and so now the complexity of writing the image and so on is shifted to user space. Um, currently there are two main tools and one called suspend for suspending the system, writing the image and one resume for resuming the image. It's resuming the system to its um, original state. Um, this has some advantages. Um, this makes things like compression or encryption or boot splashing possible while um, suspending the system to disk. <coughs> yeah, that's just a rough overview of what's new, and we will. We already did some testing, and it seems to work, and uh, we hopefully can use it in the future. Okay. Next thing we've been investigating is uh, a patch called Dintex. Um At the moment we have a, um, a static value for half for the timer ticks issued to the CPU uh, each second and with Dintex this is going to be a, 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 a variable which is dynamically chosen and this allows the CPU to enter the power uh, saving mode C3 defined by the ACPI uh, specification more often and thus we are saving power. Um, we had a colleague uh, who was testing the Dintex patch on several machines and uh, the gains are quite cool but the problems like losing interrupts uh, remain and they definitely have to go away for uh, integrating Dintex into a regular works working environment will be possible. I think that's all. Okay. First of all, thanks for coming. Um, also, we had some problems. Yeah. <laughs> some thanks problems. for staying. Um, <laughs> one thing, um, we are just using the whole kernel interface, and we are happy to have kernel hackers like Pavel Nachekov uh, out doing all else those. working on the ACPI yeah. subsystem doing hard work. Rafael is doing a lot of work on the new user.
the space of Britain spent. So we are happy that they are. We have yeah. really nothing to do with the kernel of the implementation. We are only finding the bugs. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I should also mention that there's an open source wiki page about the PowerSafe project, not only the PowerSafe daemon, and, and, but also about all related tasks. You, you just have to search for PowerSafe and the OpenSUSE wiki and you will find it. And there is also a link um, to our to a power management um, report um, where we tested and present um, the values from the different machines we tested. And so you might have a look if you like. Thanks. So, so you can tell us which brand of laptops uh, to save more of power. Um, <laughs> actually, the best system we had is a other system, yeah. which was pretty old. I guess it's, it's not a new system. It wasn't a new system, but we were able to gain like uh, over sixty percent <coughs> on the system. Especially um, runtime device power management was very helpful in the system because idle devices were consuming a lot of power without being used. So this was. Yeah. You also, that's also the last part when you are starting or setting up uh, special devices to sleep. Yes. It's supposed that the device has to support that feature, isn't it? Um, it's hardware and driver dependent, I guess. Yes. It usually the all driver had to implement and care about um, it's saving its state and so on. We also had a, tested a median, uh, a median laptop. And there we had nearly no results of power saving with the runtime device power management. Because so so the device hardware breast was about the yes. same. Yeah. 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 So, and uh, everything is very experimental. We also encountered a lot of crashes when using the uh, runtime device power management because the device wasn't up again and it was being used excessively from user space. So it's not that stable uh, as so we would wish. Do you maintain a, a sort of database of which, uh, which devices are? Uh, uh, are able to save power. I mean, uh, if you have to, to vote for a laptop and then you have to choose and you have to several uh, with the cards to choose, uh, I think power management is quite a good yeah. reason to choose yeah. one over, over the yeah. other one. For example, Atheros chips are quite um, intelligent. They are, if they are not being used, they power down a lot okay. without anything being done from the color. Well, others like, I don't know, I think I, the IPW is a good example for yeah, consuming a lot of power using it. It's really depending on the module. The IPW one half, a half year ago, it worked perfectly, and then was uh, two weeks or a month or so where the kernel oops is why I'm setting it. That's because the driver is able to do that, or is because the hardware. I'm not sure, but specific. I think the um, driver implementation was broken at the moment, but I'm really not sure about it. Any other questions, suggestions? Yeah, go ahead. Um, do you know how many, uh, are there any Ethernet devices that still allow you to detect link feet while in power saving mode? So then you can automatically power them up or down depending on whether a cable is plugged in. Um, we don't know currently. I think I, I've not seen a, um, a module or a device where you can detect, still detect the link while the device power down, but there may be some. We are not around any yet. Let's say I want to buy a laptop and I go to a store with a live CD. Is there any way I can test that power save features of that laptop? Because I don't have a multimeter present. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not at Actually, uh, you are able to have a look at the power consumption using ACPI, but this will not be accurate. So this might be a hint if it is good or not, but don't take it for sure. So I don't know. it would make sense to have some database. Like when we are doing our tests, we have the uh, test results, and I think, uh, especially when talking about chips, if an uh, Atheros chip is saving a lot of power in the system, it will be the same for another laptop brand, the same chip. So this might be some help if we have some database with the information. Okay, so thanks for coming. Thanks.